morning, good morning. Here we are, rainy Monday morning in Asakusa. We've got a little bit of a different view here. The camera I was using for the outside view, we've mentioned this before, you know, it, it finally gave up the ghost. It was a used camera when I bought it. So I've replaced it with another one. It's another Sony Handycam. And I didn't really think to check all the specs. It didn't really matter. I just needed a generic Sony Handycam. But it turns out that the lens and the focus and the field of view are a little bit different. So we don't have quite a wide a view as we had before. For example, the guy on the sign there has been chopped off. It's a bit of a narrower view. Maybe it, it sees farther better. Maybe it zooms in farther. I don't know. But we've got a slightly cropped view. I don't think it matters. I think we're okay. Good morning, good morning. Dave here trying to recover from the last few days. <laughs> Oh, is it earlier for EU? Have you changed now? Have you changed? Or is it coming up? So, gah, it's that time of year, isn't it? Late October. So for all Europe, yeah, we'll have more European viewers here now for the next half a year. Welcome aboard. I can't change at this end. There's nothing we can do here. The US changes next weekend, but I think that's patchwork, isn't it? I don't know. Okay. So is it going to be the case then where a bunch of people, they were waiting an hour ago? No, they will come in an hour late then today, a bunch of the EU people. So at around nine o'clock my time, we will see a bunch of good mornings from EU people, I guess. I don't know. Okay. What's happening today? I know we still, I'm sorry, don't have carving. There's no block on my desk, but in a few days, I will have an inundation. I'm one of the carving team for the Kyoto Journey December print, and Kawasaki-san is still doing the key block. We're kind of late getting this one through. So as soon as the key block hits my desk, and that should be any day now, it could be later today, I will be part of the team doing color blocks. So you'll see me there. Then the next thing beyond that is the second or third print. I'm assigned to the third print in next year's series. I'll be doing that. And that's coming in real soon now. Number one is done. Here are the blocks finished, ready to go for the first print in next year's subscription series. And Murata-san up in Fukui is, as you know, she's boiling paper. We've seen some of it ready for the first print in next year's subscription series. I'm really happy this is all coming together so early. Can we maintain that pace? I don't know. So anyway, with no carving today, uh, what I've had to do is, because I was out of the shop so much in the last two weeks, and because of what happened the last few days, I have had no chance to do print shaving. So it's going to be again today, I'm sorry, that not so interesting job of print shaving. Tom1060, you're asking a question. I refuse to answer that on the grounds that it may tend to incriminate me. I'm not sure if I can show you any of them, because I, without being coy, I really don't want to give away the game here. So no, I can't tell. Uh, I showed a picture of one of them on the Instagram the other day. Which one did I show? I think I showed this one. Patience, patience, patience. The paper is out, yes, the paper is out. Paper is out today for Ayumi-san. She has finished her batch of sushi cats. She finished it yesterday. Uh, no, yes, yes. Two days ago she did the sizing for the new print she's working on now. She finished sushi cats on yesterday. And today she's working on the Dragon in Clouds print. What else? Clean up, clean up. Well, that's the envelope for show and tell. That's our show and tell today. Socks. I don't know. When I first saw these prints, yeah, my socks disappeared. So maybe for some of you, these will be pretty impressive. 
Uh, I've seen them before. We've seen a few of them before on the show and tell. So it won't be an overall blow everybody's socks away. But they're pretty impressive bloody prints, that's for sure. We will also take, for a few minutes, we will take another look at the prints we looked at yesterday uh, on Thursday's stream. Remember, I was complaining about them. The colors were too brittle and hard. I have to compare with them some that are done much more nicely. So we'll do that. We'll do an A-B on the last week's uh, show and tell, and we'll see a new one. What's this? Oh yeah, not a year overseas, doesn't matter. It's a print show here in Tokyo. It happens every year. I've got, a, I've got a story about it, but maybe it's better not to sell it. I don't know. It's a print show. Uh, it's not just woodblock. It's, you know, whatever, etching, mezzotint, you name it. And there's a group, it's a charity group, the College of Women's Association of Japan. They've been running this since, oh my God, post-war. It's number 67, so do the math. I think they've done it every year in a row. So they would have started, you tell me, what's the math, in the late 50s or somewhere. It's a wonderful print show, hundreds of prints. The reason I've got this is a friend, Terry McKenna, he sent this over, and I guess he's got a print in the show this year. Oh, it says, 75th Anniversary Special Exhibition. They give scholarships and all that kind of stuff to, to, to artists. It's in Tokyo. If, you need to, if you're around, just Google it. It's a big deal. It's, not, it's, it's modern stuff. It doesn't really have much to do with what we do. Let's clear the... Oh, there is one more thing. Soka, soka. Before I clear the desks and start to work here, sorry. This was here a few days ago, and I neglected to show it to you. There's a couple of prints from a young man. I, can, I guess I can read the letter. It's okay. I think names are okay. My name is Riley. I'm from Australia. I came to visit you today, this is last week, and give you these prints. I was, I was out in Fukui Prefecture. I'm on a school trip to Japan for the next three weeks, and we leave Tokyo before you were back. I started printmaking because of you. I've been working since I was 12. I'm 16 now. Please accept these prints as a thank you for being wonderful. Thank you, Riley. He gives the address, which I will write to him. He gives me the email. I can't respond while I'm on trip, but I'll be glad to talk with you later. So this is Riley from Australia, 16 years old. And we did see the prints and... Have a look. Now this, I'm, I would really like to talk to Randy about how he's done this. This has all the appearance, of course, of one of the old woodcuts from the European tradition. It doesn't at first look like a Japanese tradition. And I don't know if it is a plank. We can see wood grain. So it's cut on the plank. So he must be using knives, I guess. It's a bit mixed. It looks like some of the old wood engravings and some of the old Jura wood cuttings very much in the European tradition. Well, some say it's more like engraving, but I'm not sure. There's knife marks. You, on a plank, you can't use a buran to engrave on a plank. It tears the grain. You, you have to use a knife. And we do see wood grain here. And it's very, very large. So it's, it's on a plank. It's with a knife. And lots of the Dura woodcuts were done that way as well. They weren't all engravings. I'm not sure if we can read what it says. Little men... Just a minute, Riley son. I'm not sure if I can read it. It says, little men who hurt themselves for extra insights. Riley, 2025. 2025? 2023. I guess the guy is stabbing himself. I'm not quite sure about the, the meaning of this. And the other one... He left two. We're going to have to zoom out. We're going to need a bigger desk. I'm not really quite sure what it is. It's one of those pictures in books when I was a kid. You'd see a picture of a building all exploded so you could see all the rooms inside. Somebody likes carving. Cool. Lots of small detail. I'm not sure how it would be printed in a press or with a baron. Maybe it's been in a press because the outside has all been rubbed as well, the place where he hadn't really scooped away. So I'm not sure. I don't think he's here to talk to, about, talk to us about it. I'll write to him later. 
Thank you, Rally Sam. If you're here or not, I don't know. They go into the collection. Swag, free stuff. I like people sending prints. It's good fun. And now to work. And what we have today, it's the same thing. We have prints that are glued to backboards. I'm not sure which publisher this is. Going by the print, this looks like Adachi, just one sec. Yeah, these are Adachi prints. So these will be very easy to get off for a few reasons. The Adachi company always used very good, very thick, very rich Hosho paper. So the paper is strong, much stronger than the backboards. The backboards were, as always, they're not even remotely close to acid free. This one isn't bad. The paper is good paper, so there's no disaster on this one. At the moment, it's like, okay, why don't you just leave it? It has to be taken off. This, the paper the print by itself would last a couple of hundred years. This acidic paper will not. So even though it hasn't started to go bad yet, it's any minute now. These prints have to come off. And the Dutchie prints are usually tacked on the one side at the top corner and part way down. So we'll see what kind of viewpoint we're going to get here. Let me get this show and tell stuff off the desk out of the way for a minute. And for those of you who haven't seen this before, we're going to use the main tool is going to be a, a beveled knife. And it's a beveled knife that is not so sharp. I think somebody gave me static about this. Don't rub it on your finger. It's not so sharp. It's sharp enough to do this to cut into the backing paper. This is what we're going to do underneath the print. Can we zoom without losing our field of view? Is a square edge important or have you tried a more rounded edge for this? It's interesting. I never thought about it. The chisel I'm using is just the chisel that's on my desk. It's the one we use to cut our registration marks. And for that, we need a straight corner. So I'm just using a chisel that's at hand, but I rubbed it on my sharpening stone first like this, a few strokes to take off the sharp edge. If it's too sharp, it's really easy to slice through the print. another one part way down. There won't be anything at the bottom, it's loose. Flat blade on the backing board, no chance of slicing the print. And she's free. paper left, but now we can see it. We can access it. And we'll use the same tool the other way around. Might help if I put the light on. Someone's saying, why did they glue the prints to bad paper? It's, it's the era, you know. We're talking about 1950s, 1960s. I'm not sure if I can say they didn't know. They certainly didn't care, didn't think it was worth thinking about. It's a bit of a paradox. A company like Adachi, you know, they knew the prints would last a long, long, long time. They didn't care, or maybe they felt they had no option. Because really, when you think about it, when you make prints that, uh, that are going to last 200 years, how do you possibly package them? There's no paper you can go and buy in the stationery store that will last that long. There's no plastic packaging that will last that long. It's like the people who are doing the fusion experiments. They're working with plasma, you know, and there's like nothing that packages it. So 
real paradox. Here at Moka Hong Kong, we're doing the best we can. We put our prints on what are supposedly, the manufacturer tells us, is acid-free paper. But am I going to believe that? How do I have any way of testing it? I don't know. How are we going to do this? After I do each one, let's slide them under the counter. I haven't seen Adachi's brand new publications. Are they still gluing it down? That's a good question. Doi doesn't, because Doi doesn't send out prints to consumers. Doi only sells basically a wholesale. So Doi sends prints loose to us. We do our own packaging. Adachi is still selling to consumers. I don't know what kind of packaging they're using. I really don't know. The work is nice. This is a nice set. I know it's a broken set. I got a note from, from watanabe -san. I think she got this on Merukari. Oop. I'm not supposed to talk about her supply sources. I think she got it here in Tokyo on Merukari. And it was a broken set. And this is nicely done. This is a dachi plate. Maybe when the time when Kubota-san was working there. This might be 1980s. Here's a little mini show and tell. It's nicely done. They've done a good job carving the outside hair. The outside hair doesn't perfectly match up, but it's fairly close. Good quality paper. It's, of course, Iwano-san's paper. And they've done a smooth job on the background. They've put a mica, shiny mica background on it. Some of the Adachi work is nice. Others, whatever. Some saying, will our craft be here in a hundred years? I don't know, and it's not my business. I don't really care. The people more than a hundred years ago, say for example, if you had asked people in our field around 1890 or something like that, they would have said, we're on the way out. It's disappearing. The printing presses are coming in. They can do it better than we can. That would have been the viewpoint. So publishers switched to using printing presses. This craft, kind of, we've been through this. We've had our existential moment, and it died. Because back at that time, it was time equals money, and the faster printing presses brought more value to society than the slower carvers and printers. The result wasn't the same, but society back then valued the speed and the quantity of the new work, rather than the feel and mood of the old work. And now here we are, a long time later, there is enough value in the work, even though it's not done quickly and efficiently. We're valuing different things in this same objects. So am I worried about what will happen a hundred years from now? It's what the people of a hundred years will decide has value to them. Maybe at that time, screens and stuff will have replaced everything and nobody will have any means to store and carry and protect and use objects on paper, in which case our work would no longer have value to that society. Not my problem. Not my decision, not my problem. Nothing to do with me. Yeah, I'm optimistic about this. I think what we're doing, of course, has value to human beings. And I would imagine the people a hundred years from now, I don't imagine they're going to be all that different. I think they will still enjoy what we do. They will enjoy the stories, the physical objects, the beauty of them. It won't be a major thing in society. It's a niche, of course. I'm not concerned about that at all. So we make our prints with the idea that they would survive as long as is physically sensibly possible. You know? When you think about it with a bit wider, 
anybody in any field today doing anything, whatever, you could pose the same question to them. What you do now, will it still have value or relevance a hundred years from now? It's almost meaningless to ask that, you know. Maybe a baker, you ask a baker, you know. I mean, I would assume people are going to still be eating bread, nice tasty bread. And not popping a, popping a pill. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is nice. It's nice. For me, it's too clean, you know. I shouldn't, I shouldn't, you know. We've talked about this before. The, the two main companies during the 20th century that were making these reproductions, there's a number of companies, but two, the two main ones were Adachi and Takamizawa. And Adachi's viewpoint was to make the prints as sharp and clean and clear, to make them look like they would have come off the, print, off, off the printer's desk in seven... This would have been, I don't know, 1790, this print, Utamaro? I don't know, no idea. The original would have been 1790 or so. And Adachi wanted to make prints that looked like the object as it would have appeared in 1790. Takamizawa, the other one, they didn't. They wanted to make the prints look old, so they would moisten their paper, they would, they would tone their paper, and they would do funny things with the colors to make them look semi-faded. And they looked okay when Takamizawa made them. The problem now is that Takamizawa's prints are aged as well. So we have double aging, the artificial aging and the real aging. This one hasn't aged much at all. This is, I guess, 1980s maybe. If I was going to put my finger on it, Adachi 1980, somewhere on there. Nicely carved, nicely printed. And I can't help any time I'm working with these prints, you know, I can't help but semi sort of animate them. The printer is a piece of paper, it doesn't nothing. It was made in whatever, 1980. It was sold as a set of prints, a set of, I think there are 25 in this set, I don't remember. And somebody bought it and boom. Now, clearly they haven't been opened, they're still clean, clear, there's no matte burn, nobody has framed these. So these prints were made in the 80s, put in a folder, sold to somebody, and they've sat on a shelf for. Right. You're telling me 40, 40 years, 45 years, you know. Now, a couple of them are missing. So what they must have done, the owner, must have got a couple of frames, put two of the prints in the frames, and whether they plan to change them out or not, I don't know. They must have, because that's why you buy them in sets. You know? But the set came to us, two of them are missing. It's, it's done. That They're sitting in a frame somewhere in somebody's house, never to be uh, recombined again. So that gives us a license to break these up. There's no point to tr taking a set of 23 prints in these bad paper folders, put them in the shop and try and sell them. Nobody wants such an object. So by liberating them, we've, we've talked about this many, many times, by liberating them two ways, one from the paper backing and two from the confines of that set wrapper that would sit on a bookshelf and never, ever, ever be looked at. These guys are all getting liberated one by one, separated from their siblings. They're going to go into our shop as single items, and they will fly all over the world. This one might fly to Australia. The next one flies to Argentina. The next one flies to Austria. I don't know. Countries with an A. So there's a bit of sadness that we're, we're breaking something that was made but I really think it makes much more sense to do this. Someone's finished on the beach for a second time, he says. Boy, you got more guts than I do. I read it, of course, many, many years ago. I don't think I could handle that a second time. Not at all.
I did reread one of Neville Shute's books, though. Was it a half a year ago? Because we were talking about it in the stream. So I did reread another one of his, and I'm not going to start that conversation again. <laughs> Is he having just started the conversation, whatever. <laughs> is the stream turning into book review corner? <laughs> so Actually, it's funny, you know, somebody in the shop yesterday, they had seen the previous stream. On, what's today? Today's Monday. So on Saturday, we had a stream here. And during the stream, I grabbed a book and waved it around for a minute. And somebody said, on the, they came in the shop yesterday, and they said, you know, my God, I didn't realize you're going to do book reviews on the Asakusa streams as well, you know. And I'm like, that wasn't a book review. I just held it up and made one or two comments about it. But maybe the confusion, because I was doing, quote, book book reviews, they're not book reviews, they're chat about books that influenced me. And somebody thought I was going to do the same thing here in Asakusa, so no, 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 no. <sighs> it's called Ten Days Rain. I don't know the backstory. Kuniyoshi. Kuniyoshi. Ten days rain. I know it's unusual, of course, of course. We're looking at a uh, a fan print. What shoot did I read? Electra something less serious by him. Less serious. My God, I don't know. Anything I can think of about him is a pretty serious thing, you know. Okay, tell you what, there is one uh, I could recommend. It's a bit of a, there is a bit of a dark moment to it because people die. But overall, it's a, a, f a bright, a light-hearted, forward-moving, warm, and fuzzy story. There's a book he wrote called Trusty from the Tool Room. It's about, whatever, just, just there's no point. I'm not doing book reviews. But if you wanted a Neville Shoot book that to me is really interesting and one that I have over my life, I've read, I'm going to say three times, I don't know. And I would happily read that again if it was time, if, you know, on the train trips back and forth to Ome. Trustee from the Tool Room. The, maybe the reason I like it is because it impinged upon my life a couple of ways. And it, uh, it very much reminded me of a man I knew and respected. Maybe we should save this then for one of the days when I'm in Ome. I can pull the book off the shelf and talk about it. It wasn't a changed my life book. It was a book that uh, just, wow, this is really nice, really well done. I enjoyed it and it had relevance to some people I had known, some decent people. Trustee from the tool room. And although there are people who, who uh, you know, uh, people die, but uh, whatever, whatever. Villager Vince, is there enough Kozo in the building to support next year's subscription paper? I think so. But there are some loose variables that are still to be tucked in and tied up, which is why when I mentioned that a few minutes ago, I think I talked about it as a plan not as a dead, done, signed, and sealed thing. I think we do. What we don't know is because of the way Murata-san is making this batch of paper, she's going to do what we call kamidashi at my request. But during the kamidashi process, a lot of the body of the paper, a lot of body of the fiber disappears, the dempun, a lot of the starch disappears. She is going to replace that by using rice powder. Anyway, long story short, we don't know how many sheets we're going to get from each kilogram of kozo. So, I don't know. I think so. And I, I'm on the optimistic side of the guessing. I think so.
Someone says, cool guitar story. Next time, show us your socks. Just wait, 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 wait. We can't dump all those stories at the same time. There's a whole bunch of different instruments and things. Whatever. We'll take them as they come. Is that Tom 1060? Yeah. Someone's asking me about manga stuff. I know nothing about manga. I have seen very few anime. I have read... The only manga I know is the kids stuff we had in the house when I had children here. You know, things like Doraemon. We ate those all up. Things like that. I know nothing about the contemporary artistic manga genre, you know, or, or the, the rock star things, the one piece. I've never cracked those at all, so I'm sorry. I'm not knowledgeable about that part of the world. I don't see anime. So I don't have any insights into any of that stuff at all. I'm sorry. There's so many things I haven't done. Earlier in the stream, you guys were talking about the Ukiwe Museum in Matsumoto. You know, what do I think of that place? I've never been to Matsumoto. I wasn't watching on my own the camera. Sorry, I don't know, maybe not. Why is it that the Japanese art style in your prints doesn't depict shadows? Well, that is that is a good question. It's a little bit out of my pay grade. Remember, I'm a carver and a printer. I am not really much of an art historian. Of course, I'm now familiar with this ukiyo-e genre because I've been working with it for so many years. And the simple, easy answer to that one, it, from a layman's point of view, it, as I said, I'm a layman's point of view. Look at this one. It's an object in isolation. It's a woman sitting there, but there's no floor. She's actually sort of floating. Here's the floor, there's the middle background, there's the top. So when there's not even any floor, when there's no physical thing, it's not every aspect of the realistic thing is not there, putting a shadow here would have made absolutely no sense. It would have been something that just didn't, it wasn't in their mindset. It wasn't in their thinking. They weren't sitting there with an easel and a model and doing their thing with the pencil, you know, and all that stuff and drawing realistically. They were drawing lines that made people think of something. It's, it's the Charlie Brown comic thing, you know. Charlie Brown's face. I mean, it's not even remotely resembling a human face, and yet we 100% accept it and we see character in there. Why is there no shadows? I mean, good grief. Why is there no shadows? Look at the size of her eyes and her mouth and her nose. There's nothing remotely real about this. That's not a human mouth. It's not a human eyes. It's not a human eyebrows. So there was nothing real about any of this. The first shadows didn't appear. They would have appeared, of course, after photography, after Western, Western pictures started to become popular in Japan, common in Japan. So that's all I can say, that's my layman's answer. And the idea of a shadow would have made no sense in this genre. And maybe, can I turn it around there? The example I used a minute ago, Charlie Brown. Do they have shadows? What I would guess is that there's a person, and underneath each person the guy goes, chuk, 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 Schultz, makes a line, chuk, chuk, to there's the ground that the person is standing on. There would be no delineation of a shadow. I'm guessing, I can't remember what they look like. Someone's asking, what's my favorite Japanese author? Again, you're asking the wrong person. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a very, 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 I was going to say not narrow-minded. That's the wrong word to use. I'm not a man of wide experience. Uh, you're asking about the world of Japanese literature. I know absolutely nothing of this. I'm sorry. Before I came to Japan, I tried looking into that. And it wasn't my world. I opened some books and I turned the pages and I read past the words in front of my mind. But I didn't understand what I was reading. It's not my world, you know. So I'm sorry to cop out. I, I keep saying, I don't know, I don't know, to a bunch of these questions. But things are what they are, you know. We've got X hundred people watching today, all with different interests. 
but my interests and my knowledge are not going to match up with, with everything that everybody knows here. And it's difficult. We're on a, a white print with a white paper and a white background. On. What can I do to make it a bit more visible? I'm scraping off the last little thing. We could take this print, throw it in the bath, and dissolve the last little bit of glue here. But that would be such an invasive, intensive process and would, would, would require so much man la labor, man hours, that we just can't do that. If this was a very expensive, very rare, some print that needed to be conserved, then a professional conservator could spend days, weeks, and months on it. This print will sell in the shop for 40 bucks. I am just trying to get it off the backing board into a state where it can be preserved and move forward. So that's enough scraping off. Most of that paper will do it. I haven't removed every last bit of residue of that glue. And maybe at some point in the future, another hundred years, maybe it's quite possible that glue could react with the atmosphere or the paper and we could get a stain in that place. I don't know. It's just not possible for me to go the full Monty on this. The prints are just, they just don't have the value, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of dipping in randomly here. It's a typical Adachi set. It's heavy on the bijinga. It's heavy on women. But it is nicely made. I'm happy about these. Watanabe-san made a good find here. These prints will go into the shop and find nice homes. They're nicely done. Look at this. It's tough to print the black hair. The black hair is on the same block as the key lines here. It's tough to print the black hair and the face and the eyes all together because you want to press fairly firmly to give a black impression, but if you press too hard, you'll schmuck the face. The last print we looked at, was it different or was it, was it two blocks? Yeah, the last one was different. The hair is a different block. You can see maybe the fine hairs, oops, where am I? Get on the camera, Dave. Where are we? Tuk, 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 tuk. The delicate hairs here are on the key block together with the face, so sop. And then the black massive hair is a separate block that he would have rubbed separately with more intensity. Again, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. Where are we? We're here. I need a full-time cameraman today. What's tomorrow's lottery numbers? You're asking the wrong day here. If you'd have asked me on the Saturday stream, Friday night for you, I had Sunday's New York Times. That's going to be fun come election day. No, election day is Tuesday, right? How could I tell it was on a separate block? It was a completely different color. One was light, one was dark. And all... Here. Okay, here you go. Here's a, here's a larger example so you can see the same thing. This one is really, really clear because it's larger. You can see at the edge of the hair here, look, we have gray, light gray, faint lines. This is one block. And that's the same block as the nose. Then on top of it, we have a jet black block. And that's printed and you can see where it comes down. You can see the jet black block comes down about that far. So it's two different blocks. One is a light gray printed with very delicate pressure and one is a black one to do the thick black printed with very hard pressure. And you can see it here because it's large but that last one I showed you was the same thing. But this one I'm showing you here now. This is all one block. It's all too... lost my spot again. It's all too small to be doing a separate block 
There's no way they could do it sensibly on two different blocks, not at this scale. And actually, too, this is a rep reproduction of a Haudenobu print, and the original would have been 1740 or somewhere. And that technique of splitting blocks and doing light and dark blacks hadn't come about yet. At this time, 1740s, all the black is still pretty much one block, and then colors go inside it. The other technique we saw, something that came a little bit farther down the road. Too much glue for this one. A little print, you didn't need that much glue. Ugh. Unnamed part time worker in the Adachi shop back in We sometimes get prints that are wholly glued down the entire print. Yes, of course, mm. of course we do. It's called being laid down. Not so much these kind of stuff. The companies, Adachi, Mokohanka, and Takamisa, we would never do that. But it was very, very common back in the older days, Meiji or, or even Edo, whatever. People would get the prints from the shops back in Edo or whatever. They would rub rice paste all over it and slap the print on the wall or a little screen they had or in an album. So it's very common, the farther back you go, to find prints that are laid down. And there's no way we can do what I just did. If the pigments that were used are water-soluble into the bath, that print goes in the bath and it gets floated off. If the pigments are not water-soluble, it's game over. There's nothing you can do. With a super rare, super expensive, very valuable print, you can put it face down to protect the pigments, and you can start moistening, dabbing, moistening, dabbing, and microscopically pulling off the backing sheet. But in a, in a print like this, you can't invest six months in it. So no, so there's really no easy answer for that stuff. If it's laid down, just leave it, unless you know what you're doing, you understand the pigments, you understand the different papers involved, and it can go in a bath. But absolutely, that's a do not try this at home unless you know what you're doing. we're dealing with here, they are not valuable prints. We're just trying to get them in a presentable form where they can be used by people in a sensible way. Stored in those folders on the bad paper, they will die quicker and they will never be seen. Removed like this, they will last longer and they will be able to be seen and enjoyed by the people who will care for them. People are asking about the bath too. I got a bunch of stuff building up, you know. We, I think we'll have a hot tub stream sometime in the near future. Not, mm, sometime coming up, we will have a hot tub stream. I've got a bunch of stuff waiting to be washed off, waiting to be floated off. It's not going to be like tomorrow or whatever, but, but we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll have a hot tub stream. I won't be in the tub. The prince will be in the tub. You can see the same thing on this one to show, at the other end of the print. At the, the one I just showed you, at the top here, we saw 
the two levels of hair, the gray and the black. But down at the other end of the print, I just noticed now getting ready to peel it off, down at the other end of the print, we've got the same thing. Look at this. You can see the line here. This hair at the bottom, this is on the first block, the light gray block. And then you can see here where it runs out. The black hair stops here. Light gray block, darker black block. The black block has more than just hair. Her teeth are on the over the harder block. Her eyes, the nose is on the, the under block with gray. The bottom line of her eye is on the under block. And the top line and the pupil of her eye are on the second block. We see the same thing with the boy, with Kintaro. His pupils are on the outer black block, as is his mouth. But look at his nose. It's on the under block. So they've split this up into two. Can I explain the floating off technique? No, nothing magical. All, all I meant was that the, the print and the backing will be floated into water. They'll go underwater. We've got a, you know, a, a, a bath. It's a, we've got a, a thing upstairs where we heat it, we put water in it, and the water becomes warm, and the print floats inside it. And after a while, the print and the backing paper become soft, the glue becomes soft, and we can sort of carefully float off and peel off the backing sheet take the print out and dry it flat. But it depends on the particular kinds of pigments being used. Teeth blackening, I don't know, I'm not an expert on that. There must be people here who can explain it much better than I can. I forget what it's called. It starts with O, O something. You're asking the wrong guy. Well, no, I should know, but... There must be people here. You guys got it? Ohaguro, thank you. Slow Deluxe, thank you. It sounds bizarre, you know, I don't know. You're coming from an era there where people had very poor dental care, so maybe what we see as ridiculous, painting the teeth different colors and black and stuff. Maybe it was just common sense when the teeth were all rotten. I don't know. I think also, did somebody explain it to me once? The idea that when the woman got married, she had to paint her teeth black and shave off her eyebrows and stuff. And maybe the idea was to become less attractive so she wouldn't fool around with other people. Was that a thing? I don't know. How's the time? 8.49. We're okay, I guess. Skip. I didn't do a, 
I didn't do my kilometer in the pool this morning. So I went to the pool. I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. I went to the pool, but I couldn't do a kilometer. <laughs> I was so slow in the pool today. The lady who does the thing with me, she, she's frequently now not there on Mondays. Actually, she comes about 8.30. So her schedule has, has changed. I see, I'll see her tomorrow, but she's not there today. So I had my lane to myself today, and my God, I was slow, 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 slow. So I can see the clock on the wall there. I got a stream at 8 o'clock, and I thought, geez, there's no way I'm going to be able to get my uh, kilometer. So I did only 800 meters today. I failed. Maybe this happens a couple of times a year. I only do 800. I'm getting old. No, I've got an excuse. The shop. I've been here on the shop. I came back from only Thursday night. I've been staying Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I had a meeting with the carpenters out there for the new shelves on Thursday, and I knew the shop was going to be busy Friday, so I came back Thursday night. So I was in the shop now, Friday all day, Saturday all day, Sunday all day. Can I, is there, I need a, a button here to press. This is a recording. <clears throat> Those three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, have been the biggest three days in Mokohankan shop's history. When you exclude... Uh, the visitors with the black car who take a truck full of prints. When it's a day when there's just normal customers, these are the three biggest days in Mokohankan's history. The, just, just, they're flying, they're flying. There was four of us on staff, people were lined up. It was a ton of fun, ton of fun. Visitors, YouTube people, whatever. Once, you know, they're sort of quiet. I can see what's happening. But once somebody comes forward to me and says, Dave, I, I've been enjoying your YouTube, and we start talking to him, that's it. Everybody else in the whole damn room, they now know it's okay to talk to me. They flutter around. <laughs> so, so the girls are busy like, this is, a, I'm sorry, the girls are busy ringing up stuff, and, and Dave's standing there talking to people, and it was just so much fun. But my God, I was beat last night. Three days of it, three days of it. It's so much fun. I don't have any idea how long it's going to continue. It's not autographs, it's pictures, of course. People ask, can we, is it okay if I ask, maybe, can we perhaps, picture, yeah, no problem, no problem, no problem. It's good fun. I, I sometimes ask for their names. I try and make an attempt to, to get a picture in my mind, that person. There's the two guys in black shirts, the guys from Sweden. One is called Greg and one was called George. The anglicization of their names. They're going to come back. I'm trying to put a thing in my mind. Okay, uh, two I know, gentlemen with names that begin with G, Greg and George. So two years from now, three years from now, when they're back, will I remember them? Probably not, but I gotta try, you know. So I finally got to remember John's name. Maybe he had to come back eight times before I remembered his name. I don't know. <laughs> You're now on TV. So you did well with me. That's because it hasn't been that long. And there's a few things here. You were here like only X months ago. Then in the stream, you said you're going to Japan. Then in the stream, you said, I'll be in Japan stopping to see Dave next week. So I had a whole bunch of hints. So by the time you showed up, these things are cooking in my back, back of my head. And I'm like, it's just, it's not too complicated. If I hadn't remembered, I, actually, I got it wrong. You're now on TV, says, and I did, I got it wrong. I said, give me a minute, give me a minute. And I'm... Yeah, you're not on TV. And I got his name wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> no warning next time. No warning. You play the game. You want to play hardball, be prepared. Do I know you? <laughs> so, Have the other shop owners noticed your popular print shop? How do I know? I mean, the, one, there aren't really any other shop owners. There's other people, the, the shops down in Jimbo Show, they don't do what we do. They are, they are print dealers. We're a print publisher. Our main business is the prints we published. There are no other shops like this. We have an antique corner. That's fine. That's kind of like the Jimbo Show shops. But there's nobody else like us. 
we're the only active woodblock print publisher here in Tokyo. On the planet? I don't know, you tell me. Is anybody else publishing woodblock prints? We publish at least one a month, sometimes more. Oh, you're talking about the shop neighbors. I thought I thought you meant have the other shop owners noticed your popular print shop. Come in. I thought you were talking about other woodblock shops. No, 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 no. Oh, the street. Well, in terms of the street, it's not just me. We are all run off our feet. The the beef guy next door, Kobe Beef. They are busy. They're not doing so well at lunch, but they are busy in the evenings. They've got touts out on the street. They've got always two touts out there. One of them's a girl. A couple of girls. Kobe beef, will you try Kobe beef? Kobe beef, hello, please try Kobe beef. So that helps, but also the other thing that helps them is there's so many people here and only X number of restaurants and every restaurant in this district. And you can quote me, whatever it's true, you can, you can come and verify this. Every restaurant in this district is jammed from whatever time, 6, 6.30, round through till 8, 8.30 at night. So they're full too. As a, as a matter of default, people can't find a space, can't find a space, can't find a space. Uh, Kobe beef, not so sure about that, too expensive. They come back five minutes later because there's no other place. So at evenings, they're jammed. Jammed. As to how well they're doing, how much they made yesterday, nobody tells numbers. I mean, this is Japan. There's the standard thing. How you doing? Looks good. How you doing? Ma, ma. The answer is ma, ma. It could mean they're going to the bank with wheelbarrows, or it could mean they don't have quite enough customers, but it's still, ma, 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 ma. The feeling is, we're okay. And when they ask me the same thing, I don't tell them about my wheelbarrow, we just tell them, yeah, ma, we're okay, we're happy. There's so many people. Hopi Dori is packed, absolutely packed every day. Over, over towards Sensoji Temple. We'd never go over there if we can possibly help it. But uh, every now and then, a customer here gets lost. And they're clearly a little bit... Can I say this without getting in trouble? It's okay. Most customers, they ask us, where's the train station? How do we get back to the Ginza line? And we stand at the door. Here, go here, go there, go here. And they says, got it, good. And they got their phone, whatever. But every now and then, there's somebody who just really doesn't get it. And they clearly, you know, we've asked, they've asked us where's the station, we've described it, and their face is a little blank, they're in trouble, they don't know where they are, they've got a phone but don't really know how to use it. And in, which, in that case, if there's enough room in the shop, if it's not too crowded, I'll say, okay, no problem, I'll take you there. I did this yesterday, I put my shoes on and took four people, they were Italians, I think, Italians. I took them out to the corner to show them where the train station was. And over at Sensoji, we, we couldn't get through. We had to stop back and say, wait, 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 wait. Okay, let, let's go to the back alley. And we had to go through the back alleys to get down to the Ginza subway line. We couldn't go through the main street there, the four of us, five of us. John, there's people that don't get it. You know, it's really crowded. They don't know which way is north. You get turned around. It's difficult to know where you are. There are people who get directions, and there are people who really don't get it. Lots of them out there. And the umbrella count, at the moment, we're up five. We're plus five in umbrellas. Because <laughs> the last few days, it's drizzled a bit, but it hasn't been constant rain. So people have a 7-Eleven umbrella that they've got when it started raining. It's raining when they come in the shop. They fold their umbrella, put it in the stand outside. And then half an hour later, by the time it comes to leave, the sun's shining, they're happy, they got their bag, they do it, I say goodbye, they walk away, and I don't know they've left an umbrella, and they forget it. And they've totally forgotten, and an hour later it starts to rain, and they realize, where's my umbrella? And they've left it at one of the shops. So we're, we're plus five at the moment, we've got a rack on the stairs. <laughs> they will disappear, because the other way around happens as well. People who don't have an umbrella, they're here, they start shopping, whatever, and while they're here, and they stand at the exit here, and we're like, you don't have an umbrella? 
no, no, it's a long birth and here's a convenience store. So we just give them one of the umbrellas. It's in and out, in and out. How's our time? Nine o'clock. Do a few more here. Oh, we're going to promote smoking here. Lady with a pipe. Blowing smoke. Are we allowed to show this or is it supposed to be prohibited these days to show this? I'm asking, does it rain like it rains in Florida? There, there's, there's all kinds of rain. There's light rain, heavy rain, monsoon rain, start and go, same as anywhere, you know? of course. All kinds of it. These days, I mean, it's rainy again today. This is unusual for late October. By now, we are usually out of all warm, you know, the, the rain in Japan, here where we are, it comes from warm tropical air coming up from the south. And by this time of year, end of October, the airflow patterns are gone, the polar vortex thing. By this time of year, Japan, this part of Japan, is usually covered with cold, dry polar air. So there will be snowy days. Most days will be clear blue sky and chilly in a normal year. But it's raining outside today, and this is not so common. It's very warm. I didn't wear a jacket when I went to the pool today. It's the new paradigm, I guess. And it's going to affect our business uh, in, in terms of the mulberry fiber. We, we're already chatting about this with the suppliers. How is the mulberry fiber going to be affected by the new warmer climate? And you can laugh about this, but Ayumi-san, one of our printers upstairs, her family has a bunch of land in Hokkaido. I think they were farmers or whatever a long time ago. Uh, they've got a bunch of land in Hokkaido, and there would never have been any idea that it could have been used for mulberry because, you know, Hokkaido. But in the new climate and under this new paradigm, it's quite possible, and maybe a little bit too soon right now, but this is now openly being considered and thought about, that we could use some of their land to try growing some mulberry fiber. Someone's hitting, hiding upstairs, just after 9 o'clock. Uh, who comes at 9 o'clock? Naomi-san comes at 9. So if you ordered or printed something over the weekend and you've been wondering why nobody replied to your emails, the office is closed on the weekends, and that's Naomi-san coming now. Or maybe it's Yamada-kun. I didn't see the camera. If it was a young lady, it was Naomi-san. If it was a young boy, it was Yamada-san. And she'll be spending the morning answering the emails, saying thank you for the orders, and getting ready to ship out stork in rain. How many over the weekend? My God. We're about halfway through the batch already, after a couple of days. I, a little bit, I regret mentioning it on the stream the other day. I'm sorry. I don't want this to turn into a shopping channel. Moko Hong Kong QVC. What's it called? So I a little bit regret that I mentioned that, I'm sorry. Anyway, weekend orders will be answered and shipped today. Oh, this is a nice print. This is different, eh? look at this one. I don't like what they've done here, but they must have followed from the original. We talked about the light gray and dark gray, and this is sort of the same. We see the same thing. The eyebrows here are on the light key block. Where am I? Light key block. The nose is on the light key block. The, in this case, the rim outside the eye is on the light key block. And then the pupil, boom, and the teeth, boom, come in with 
the black block. But what they've done here, is there a lighter gray underneath? Yeah, there is. There are lighter gray hairs under there, but we can't see them at all because they've brought the black block all the way down to the end of the light gray hairs. And the only reason Adachi would have done that, I guess, is they've copied the original. There are. There are light hairs under there, but they're not visible anymore. I don't know if that's their screw-up, just bringing them down too far, or if they're just copying the original. We also have a problem with this. We have... This is my first guess. This is not foxing because we've got a strong dot surrounded by a color field. My guess would be iron particle in the paper. It's not on the top of the paper. It's inside the paper. So Dave's first guess at this is iron particle in the water that was used when the paper was made. Standing by, willing to be found, proven differently when we get more information. Like, is it on the back? Yeah, it's inside the paper. This is not a printer problem, it's not a sizing problem. It's a little slip up, a little piece of iron that ended up in the paper. Now the print is still nice and the print is attractive, so what, what the Nabisan and the gang will do, they will discount this one. They've got some labels they call a special price and they will discount this to some, to some level, I don't know. Maybe the print might have been a 9,000 yen if it was in beautiful condition and maybe they'll drop it to 5,000 yen, I'm, I'm not sure. She has a sliding scale she uses, I don't know. That's not my, uh, not my job. Is it going to spread further and further? Given that this is 1980, and that's where we've got to, I would think at the moment that that's it. That it's not going to go any further. Again, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a scientist here. We can't get rid of this. The only way to get rid of this would be to bleach it, and that would damage the paper more than anything else it would do. It's possible, should I go in there and excavate and take away the iron dot, and that would sort of maybe guarantee that it doesn't spread any further, but I can only do that by leaving a hole. It's visible from the front. So I think we will be leaving it, describing it to the person, and discounting it. Where's my... Could we bleach it? Yes, but. Yes, but. And again, the same thing I mentioned before. Perhaps if this was a very rare print, an original from the Utamaro era, and it was in this condition, and a print like that could be sometimes like six figures, you know, $100,000 or something. And a print like that, you can afford to spend a few thousand dollars at a professional conservator. And maybe, I'm just saying maybe, you don't try this at home, I don't know, maybe he could use bleach at a very microscopic level. Put this under a microscope, use tiny bits of bleach, get the thing gone, then use alkali to, to you know, get the pH back to normal and make sure he rinses carefully. So perhaps it would be possible with enough uh, time and trouble and money and investment and care to, to get that out of there. But it would just take far more resources than this particular copy of the print is worth. It's come through to the backing boards as well. So we're saving the backing boards by getting rid of that rusty print. We've saved the backing board. <laughs> the 
Someone's saying, why is the paper shiny? It's been printed with powdered mica. Mixed in with the background color has been mica powder. And this is very common in this era. Prints of Utamaro Sharaku in the 1780s, going into the 1790s, coming into 1800. It was a very common thing. Adachi screwed up a little bit. They've got a bit too much here in one spot. It was very common to use a background for mica powder. And then something like this, the black rich color would go on after the background. Normally we print key lines first. And the key line, the nose and stuff, would have all been done first, the outlines of the hand and things. Then the brownier colors would have gone in, the lips would have gone in. And then the mica powder would have gone on. And then last, the black would have gone on around it because this lettering has to sit on top of the mica powder, which is not transparent. If we'd put the lettering in first, then the mica powder, it would have blurred over the lettering. Nicely done. These guys have done a good job. It's clean and sharp. It's too bad about that one little defect there where a drop of iron, I think, a drop of iron got into the water. I think, 11, I think we're getting close. I think we'll, we'll pack this up. We'll do this the last one and we'll have a show and tell. Because it's a double show and tell today. It's the uh, recap of the last one and also some new prints. So. glued on tightly. Mm, rum, 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 rum. on really tight. I don't want to tear the paper. We're good to go. That's enough. Okay. Thank you, Adachi. Let's move over. Show and tell. Show and tell. What's the mica layer printed with? It's printed with mica powder mixed with paste. There's a few different ways to put it on. And the one they've used there is they've printed a light background color on the print first. Then they've made in a bowl a blend of a thin paste, like a wheat paste, a rice paste, with mica powder in it. They put this in a tray, they dip a moist brush in it, and that mica powder has been brushed over the surface of the print. They put a mask around the parts they don't want the mica, the, you know, the face and, and black hair, and then they dress the mica on. That's one way. Another way is printing glue and sprinkling the mica powder over it. There's lots of different ways to kill that cat. Okay, 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 okay. Let's try and do this without too much verbiage. Hopefully we'll get to the real show and tell today, unless we get stuck on this one. Here we are with the set we had yesterday. I couldn't read one character. It's Ichiryu Sai Hiroshige Meisho Edo Hyakke. 100 views of Edo by Ando Hiroshige Daichi. And somebody helped us read this, but I still don't know the pronunciation of it. So we learned a new kanji that means collection or gathering, but I still don't know how to pronounce it. Daishu. No, I don't know. Anyway, enough of that. We're not going to go through the same story. Okay, let's grab one or two of the prints. And what I was trying to verbalize to you yesterday, last stream, was the harshness, the hardness of some of the printing. We were looking at a couple of things. There were white spots here and there where the carvers, it seemed, had been a little careless. The carver overlapped some of these colors in places, and some places he missed and got a little white spot. There's some there, there's one down here in the water. But also we were talking about 
the hardness of the pigments and also the semi-opaque, the semi-opacity of some of the pigments. And we were guessing these were from, what did I say? Late Meiji, Taisho, maybe about 100 years ago, give or take is what I guessed. So let's compare now with some other reproduction prints. I don't have an original Hiroshige to show you. We've got this set. This is 1950, remind me, remind me. I think this has got a date in English. It's 1950, oops. Drop it all over the floor, Dave, why don't you? It's Meiji 34. What's Meiji 34 in real numbers? Meiji 34, help me please. I'm oh, not Meiji 34, Showa, Showa, Showa. Dave, Showa 34. I was born in Showa 30, uh, 26, so this is eight years after me. 1959, you got it, 1959. And then we have the same prints again, published in a wooden box here. We've seen these on Chantel many times, or sometimes. And this box is the same wood blocks, different printings. And this one is dated, uh, or uh, this one is dated Showa 32, two years earlier. So this is 1957. This is made in the year Dave and his family got on the Titanic kind of, Titanic kind of boat and went across the Atlantic. And the price was sen hyakuen. For the set of 30, it was 1,100 yen was the price. Anyway, let's compare the prints. Now, this is a different random set. The entire set had 119. Do we have the same one for comparison? I, I should have checked before I pulled this down. I think so. I think I remember seeing it in here. There it is. Okay, 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 okay. They're a little bit different size. These are postcard size prints. These are a little bit bigger. And let's zoom in. Okay. Step one. Okay, the, the earlier version from the Taisho period has horinuki. There's some places missing. This version looks like it's good and tight. He's got a bit more overlap than this guy. And because these the bamboo poles are made in a lighter color, the overlap shows much more. Good or bad, I don't know. And then the printing. Here we are. Look, the opaque pigment on this one. It blurs out. Do I need to zoom in more? Can I zoom in more? The black lines are partially covered by the opacity of the yellow pigment. These guys, there's no opacity. They've used a different pigment. And obviously this company and this company have used two different originals as comparison. And right away i got to say, this is not a question of look at this bad print, look at this good print. It's not the case. They both have better points and worse points. I think this one has been printed with the key block way too dark. This one is much more tasteful. The yellow pigment spoils it. The sky, these guys have done a much nicer sky with a moon. These guys, I think it's too hard. Let's compare some of those colors we're talking about. The red, too harsh, too hard. Much nicer blend, nay. But this is not night and day. Example good, example bad. Look at the light difference, the way it looks different in the light. Look at that. In this case, it's sort of cool. This is a moonlit night, right? And the people on the bridge there and the guy underneath are supposed to look like they're in the moonlight. It's a full moon. And this one doesn't get any of that. There's no sense of illumination in the picture at all. It's a dull tone over everything. This one, even though those print, those colors were too hard, they're in the moonlight. I sure don't like the yellow, but whatever.
Somebody's pointing out, John, is it the gradient? These guys have put a gradient here. These guys have left it off. So these guys are certainly going a cheaper way to do this, you know. Let's find another one to compare. Sit there while all, all looking at one print. Just a minute. Let's find another one. Oh, here we, we do have another one. Okay. <clears throat> this is Oji Jinja, a shrine up in Oji. It's still there. And I think that's Mount Skuba in the background. I don't think you can see that anymore from this, from this area. Here's the one. Again, this is the hard, brittle colors with strange yellow. And these guys have done... It's a bit so gloomy, you know. bit gloomy. They've printed with the key block too hard. When it's so small and the lines are so close together, back off the key block. Leave it a bit more gray. Everything turns into a big blob that you can't get any definition of. <clears throat> this one, although it's got terrible pigments used, at least there's more light and there's more openness to the thing. Look at this. Which would you rather have? Dave doesn't like either of them. But they're very well made now. It's very well made. Let's take one from here that really, really, really looks nice. Actually, this one, this one's done well. Do I have it in the other group? I don't know. This is a random grouping, so I don't, they don't match up the sets. No, that one is not in this set, so let's back up then. I've got to find one that is. How about the, uh, the famous shadow picture? I know that's in this set, somewhere here. Here we go. Here's the famous shadow shot. This is Sadu Wakacho. There's not a whole lot of dramatic differences, is there? These guys have put a gray tone. The gray background tone goes right to the bottom. It's also got some glue here. I'm sorry, there's some glue on the top of it. The gray background tone goes to the bottom. These guys have left it whiter at the bottom, and that makes the shadows here more pronounced. Yeah, the shadows are darker, but interestingly, these shadows stick out more because of the light background. More color here, richer color. These guys haven't gone for that. Oh, look at this. Place your bets, people. What do you think here? Carving mistake or choice? Place your bets. I think so too. I think it's a mistake. I think this is a cheaper, faster production. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm glad I bought them, you know. I'm glad I picked it up. Here's one. Do we have the same one in this folder? There it is. Oh, much nicer. Look at this, look at this, look at this. this the finger is pointing, you know. This is the post-war edition, but I should mention, this post-war edition, I'm convinced the blocks are pre-war. 
I think these blocks date from the Taisho period and the 1950s edition we have here was printed from old blocks. I have no proof of this whatsoever. This one we know is an older edition. Look at this, look at this. Kensai, good morning. Good morning. Didn't expect to see you on a Monday. Yeah, uh, Marcel. Marcel? Lots of differences here. Look at this. Look at the shadows. There's two layers of shadow block here. This one just has one. Again, those are not specifically a mistake. It's just there was so much variation back in the old day. One of these perhaps reflects the earliest Hiroshige edition. Then as the blocks wore out, they'd carve some more and they wouldn't care that the shadows were a different shape. So I don't know which of these is more authentic. I don't know. This one I don't like because of the colorants they used, and this one I don't like because the key blocks are too dark. Overall though, this set is much, much nicer. Tell you what, while we're still on this one, let me crack this then. Because that version I have that's two years earlier, maybe, 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 we're going to see something different here. Can I find these? Where is it? One sec. It's got to be in here. It is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. This is the version printed two years earlier. Same block set, different printers and a different guiding hand, a different publisher saying, here's what I want you guys to do. These prints are out there. This, this book that we're looking at, this comes, up frequent. <clears throat> this comes up frequently on Yahoo Auctions. They must have made a ton of these. It's actually got some English. And it's funny too. It says here, the Tokyo Association of Woodcut Printing Artists. We've got them in Japanese here. It's Tokyo Mokohanga Kouge Kumiai. I am actually a member of this. They let me come in as a member when I first came here uh, in 19, it was about 19, I think I met the first guys about 1990 or 1991, somewhere on there. And they, uh, they let me in the group. I have the Kanban, I have the chest pin. I don't do any work with them at all, of course. So this, uh, this little book here, this is made by uh, my group of craftsmen. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Let's find one more. We're obviously not going to get to that little envelope today. Here we go. Okay, last one to compare. This is Yotsumi no, Hana, no Hashi the place from which you can see eight bridges. And I don't think we see them all in the picture here, but there was such a location at one moment where you could see eight bridges. I am going for this one. Look at this, the beautiful tone across the whole thing. This one is a bit sharp and angular. The colors are a bit brighter. Doesn't have a nice smooth blend. Look at this. When they're, when they're blended properly. Oh, Udagawa san good morning, good morning. Ha <laughs> ha. 
That's a funny one. There's none of them that I want. Oh my God, every one of them is, oh, I wish they hadn't done that. I wish they hadn't done that. I wish they hadn't done that. The more colors you get in any given picture, the more mood there is, the more chance there is to, to do different things differently. If I had been the publisher, it wouldn't look like this. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, 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 that's enough. We have that little small envelope for show and tell. No problem. It can just wait till next time. Doesn't matter. This is Monday. We'll be back here on Thursday. I think almost certainly I will be chopping wood on Thursday. But it's possible we could be upstairs on the third floor playing with hot water. I don't know. Too soon to call. Let's put the outside camera up. Is it still raining? No, it looks like the rain stopped. They're not carrying umbrellas. I, have, I haven't caught much of the chat here going through. I, I'm reading it every day at lunchtime, uh, without fail usually. So uh, who's that? That's, uh, don't recognize the bag. Maybe what not be sound, maybe. Okay, thanks very much. I'll see you in a few days on Thursday. Thanks for watching, and I hope it's been, whatever, worthwhile hanging out together. See you then. Three, two, one, down we go.